from someone on the outside in and as someone who has helped one and and starting to help a second fire department for an hour a week if you can get just a little better and and maybe down the road um be able to maybe your tank lasts a little longer right maybe your maybe your scott pack lasts a little longer even 15 seconds 20 seconds that's that could be life and death god forbid Hey, it's Nicholas from 1075. Welcome back to another episode of 1075 Chatter. Today's guest, we have John Kiritin. Kiritin? <laughs> Kandjian. 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 Yes. <laughs> okay. John from PAD performed des- as design fitness. Uh, can we begin with uh, just tell me a little bit about yourself, how you started this journey of fitness, and how you, start your biz- how you started your business? Yeah, of course. Um yeah, thank you guys for having me. I, you know, I've, I've uh, gotten to know you, Nick, and, and everybody at the shop a little bit uh, in the past. Is it a year yet? Maybe it's a year. Almost coming up on a year. Um, yeah, so I, I, uh, I don't know. Where do I start? I, re- I wrestled in high school. I really stayed in the gym through college and after. Um, I, uh, I found CrossFit. Um, I think in about 2010, 2010, 2011, somewhere around that time after I graduated college. Um, and I just found that, I, you know, I enjoyed the challenge of it and, and, the, and the push and the technique and the skill and that it was uh, infinitely scalable and, you know, all those things that you've probably all heard. Um, and, uh, you know, I just found that I, that I enjoyed it and I enjoyed helping other people in class and started coaching. Um, and it was really just just a hobby as I was, you know, working my full time job. Um, got a job as a coach, uh, just par- again part time on the side. Um, and I always kind of knew that I, I wanted to own my own business. Both my parents owned own their own businesses. They were own uh, they were both entrepreneurs. Um, and so I kind of I I always had that drive. So I. For, for a very long time, for years, really, I was trying to figure out what what the synergy would be between owning my own business, doing what I doing what I enjoyed doing. Um, I didn't really know. It took me a long time to figure out that I could like how to make money uh, and earn a living with uh, fitness, other than just you know um, coaching a CrossFit a few car, CrossFit classes a week. Um. So that's like the my business side of things, uh, and and um, where I've moved from working a job to owning my own business and, and earning a living and being an entrepreneur that way. Um, I grew up in Bergen County. I, I was uh, I was born and raised in Wyckoff. I went to Don Bosco Prep. I went to uh, Marist College. I major, actually majored in criminal justice. So we see where that got me. I'm here <laughs> owning, owning my own business. No, I mean, that's obviously very hard. You know, the, the tests and the interviews, yeah. and uh, it's, a, it's a very hard thing to get into. So... Um, so I, uh, yeah, I kind of pursued whatever was going to um, help me to right, pay back my college loans and, and pay my bills and, and earn a decent living. I worked at Don Bosco Prep for a period of time. Um, and you got to enjoy from, what you do. You have I to mean, enjoy what you honestly. do. Honestly. Otherwise, either you don't have the fuel to do it. You just don't have the, the persistence and, and dedication and motivation and energy to do it. There's no way. Um, I live in Oakland now. Uh, we have I have two kids. Uh, it, that is the best, hardest thing in the world, raising children. Um, it is. It's, it's a workout. It, out it's exhausting, itself. but it is infinitely rewarding. Um, you get to to really mold these little humans and and develop help them develop their character and guide and teach them and um, uh, you know raise them in faith and and uh, to be you know. Uh, good Christians and honest citizens and just people of an honesty and integrity, which is really, that's the mirror, really the most rewarding thing in my life right now. And they look up to you and how you, yeah. what you do, <clears throat> what you say on everything. They are like little, I'm going to, I'm going to date myself tape, <laughs> tape recorders. No, they're, they, they absorb everything. Um, <laughs> good, the good and the bad. So yeah, they, yeah. they see you looking out, do they, they join they you? They do. Yeah, they do. They copy that too. My little guy will like 
climb on you know climb on things and pull himself up onto things and and Rosie Rosie knows how to deadlift with proper form and yeah it's it's, awesome. it's, it's neat it's really cool. Um, I mean as far as the as far as the business, um, I started my business in I think March of 2017. So that's seven years, right? 24 seven years I'm in business. Yeah, seven years. Uh, I opened my LLC in 2017, so it's probably a little longer than that. Twenty, okay. maybe, maybe almost going on eight years. Like actually going to people's homes to train mm-hmm. them. Um, and I started with a barbell and some weights in the back of my truck because I I knew what I liked. I knew what I what I um, I knew what I liked sharing with people, and I knew what equipment I had, like what what I guess tools or assets that I had. I had a barbell. I had some plates and maybe a kettlebell or two. And so um, I, I put those to work for me. I had a truck. It was easy to bring it around, whatever. I started in the summer. Um, it was easy to train people in the morning. It was cool out, generally pretty nice. Most people had a garage, so like that was easy. I knew, I knew winter was coming, so I had to kind of solve that problem. Like, okay, well, what am I going to do? Like, where am I going to go? Um, not everybody has the room to do it in the garage or in their house. I can't bring barbells and, and plates inside. Um, and I refused to pay rent i was not going to pay rent i don't to blame someone. you it's expensive it and now is from absurd. seven years ago and looking to at now, it now it's yeah yeah nick it's wild right so um yeah i just kind of viewed that as comp- yes it, it's a necessary ex- expense for for business owners and and running a business but i just viewed that as such a massive bite out of my monthly revenue um Certainly at the time I couldn't afford it, but I've built a business off of mm-hmm. not not paying rent now. And so um, you know, I can I was able to put that money back into the business and grow and scale and, and all of it. And so obviously you have two trailers. Correct? Two trailers, two trucks, and two other trainers that work for me, right? So And that, that rent that you would pay for is paying for that. Exactly. And exactly. Don't have to go into it. It may be pi- paid off, but Right. A yeah, trailer is easier to pay off than a Right, and it's something that that is mine at the end yep. of the day, right? Yep. Eventually, um, yes, the big trailer. There's a payment on the big trailer, but it's at the you know I think in another year it's going to be paid off. At the end of the day, it's yours. It's mine. So right, um, you don't have anybody coming. Hey, you exactly. can't be here anymore. Exactly, we're selling the place. Exactly, right. There's no that's kind of not over my head, and it doesn't limit eliminate you as you. I've seen you on eighty and going up to. I guess Sparta or something, mm-hmm. coming back from Sparta. Mm-hmm. I don't know how far you actually go. I'll go anywhere. I'll go anywhere. I have clients in, in Florham Park and Whippany, and, and um, I, was, uh, I was training somebody in uh, Englewood for a period of time and Garfield, so not, you know, not, not close from Franklin Lakes over mm-hmm. Wyckoff necessarily, especially not towing a trailer. Um, yeah, so, you know, I, I, I love it. I love the... the truck and trailer part i i love the the fitness part the uh the relationship building because in fitness and specifically training you you spend a lot of time with people one hour a week two hours a week three hours a week four four hours a week there was a guy i was training four times a week for a period of time um you know texts and phone calls and conversations about nutrition and and you know random conversations during the day and and checking in with people on you know how they're how they're eating and Mm -hmm. um you know, of course, there's always rest time between sets, so you end up chatting about things, and sometimes there's therapy sessions. <laughs> and, you know, so yeah. uh, there's a lot of time and a lot of relationship building. And um, for anybody has who has built any business, I've spoken to this about most of you, and certainly uh, Ryan and Larry. Um, a lot, a major portion of business is relationship building and um, keeping your word and doing what you say you're going to do, and um, you know calling people back is huge now because the people don't right you, mm-hmm. you get ghosted or yeah. you get ignored or whatever and, and it's not like you push you you don't sell something you just and then it's like the same aspect as 1075 is well friendly as brother sister right. as and we all get along and there's a click to that mm-hmm. it's not like oh we're trying to sell this 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 here no. you need your protein you can tell that you love that you guys love it and enjoy it and are into it and you know the the fire service side of things for for most of you um 
people can sense that. And I, th- I like to think that um, my clients and all of you guys get that from me. Like I, I, I do my best to live it myself mm-hmm. and, and I share it because I like it. And I, I love it. It's just a part of my life, right? It's become a part of Amanda's life. It's part of my kid's life. You know, my mom is just turned 70. She works out a couple times a week. Um, so uh, there are very few genuine things in our world right now, and I think that's refreshing to people. And so uh, when you, you – you can't possibly fake it for this long. No. Right? So, and it's so the same with you guys, right? You walk into the shop, and you, the, the banter and the laughing and the, the – the you guys are all working hard um i say you say to you guys all the time when i look in a into a vehicle and there's wires all over the place <laughs> and uh like i <laughs> i don't know really what i'm looking at yeah but uh i really respect the, the craftsmanship that all of you guys have so you can tell you love it that's the energy yeah and you too and especially how you train and you're able to make it fun and it's not oh i gotta go training and it's gonna be boring or something but it, it's fun. It's fun to do it. It's entertaining, and it's a uh, learning experience. Well, some of us, some some of you guys are entertaining for sure. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Sometimes you have to draw us a map. But. Right. That's right. Yeah. No. It's um. It's uh. It's one of my favorite sessions all week for sure. Yeah. Coming into that's to good. Change you guys. That's yeah. Good. It really is. I, I really I really enjoy it. I really have fun. So. I would. Um, hopefully. Uh, you laugh at the end of the day, and uh, that's because of us. I look forward to coming. I really do. <laughs> you know, um, I and I've said this to other clients of mine. I there's nobody that I really don't like going to. I really mm-hmm. do genuinely enjoy all my clients. Um, you know, my guys are all good guys. Um, certainly different energy level and different ages, mm-hmm. and it, they are all different relationships. But um, and I I certainly do try to have fun with everybody, um, because from like most of, most people that are, are dads, right? Um, or at, if not if not dads, they're most of them are business owners. Um, no, I think everybody's a dad, at least on you know, dad or grandparent or was a dad at one point. So this is their as I was saying before we got on. Um, this is your your hour to yourself, mm-hmm. right? So some some guys will come in the trailer and just sit down and. <sighs> Even if it's 5.30 in the morning. Like, I train Ryan at 5.30 in the morning. Um, and uh, it's, it's a lot of times, it's, it's just reset time. Um, and the fitness is beneficial, and the fitness is important. But just as important is the, um, is the reset time and the fuel-up time yourself. What would you say as uh, your clientele is half police, fire, EMTs or I would say most are not actually mm-hmm. the yeah most are not maybe maybe a quarter twenty five percent are maybe um, firefighters and two or three police officers maybe I think uh, two retired yeah mostly retired there's no I don't think I have any um. Maybe one active law enforcement, but um, yeah, it's mostly not. And I, so I, my first, I guess you could say, introduction to that was uh, Mawa Company Four. I had a friend of mine who was, um, or I, ha- I should say, I have a friend of mine who was, who was, um, who is a part of that fire uh, fire department, that company, Company Four in Mawa, and um, I. I always had a sense, like even even years ago, that that fitness, of course, right? We fitness is important to any public service, right? Of course, fire and fire and law enforcement, but um, that that's a that was a missing link, especially for um, for volunteer, right? And so, um, I do I felt and I do feel that I can bring something to the table. Um, to be able to help them, to be able to help all you guys um, in the experience of what it's like to, to train the way I'm training and, you know, train as a group and get you guys to, or a firehouse to work, work together as you all do together very well. Um, I can bring 
equipment and implements to a firehouse that um, that most gyms don't have, right? Uh, Atlas stones or the yokes or the farmer carry handles or um, you know any, any odd object training, right? Bench pressing and squatting is great, but you're not going. You know, you generally don't do those kind of things on, yeah. a, on a fire call. Um, so you know. To, to fill all of your planes of movement, the, your sagittal plane, your frontal plane, your transverse plane, right? I'm kind of geeking out a little bit right now, but um, that's real life, right? We don't live in a front to back, left to right world. Most of it's rotational, train your transverse plane. And so to be able to train in that way with the tools and the implements and the equipment that I have and be able to bring it to a firehouse that might not even have a gym of their own. I mean, Company 4 has a, has a beautiful gym upstairs. But um, most volunteer departments don't. Yeah, right. So I mean, the two I'm on don't. They, we have small firehouses. I mean, one of them does have a uh, couch area and stuff, but we don't have a weight room. Right. And maybe Bergen County probably has most of that stuff. Right. Maybe some per se county, mm-hmm. but yeah. most of the volunteers don't have it. Right. And f- coming from a volunteer thinking – you don't realize you're out of shape. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you looked at me two years ago, you'd be like, holy shit. Well, and I know even in the time that we've been training, Nick, and in the time that I've seen you, you you've changed even the time that I've seen you. So if it's if it has doubled since I've met you, then, I mean, you've changed completely. Yeah, it, it's – and honestly, from my experience, I didn't realize I was getting that big. Of course. And, it, and it's like you don't see it's a problem till it's a problem. Mm-hmm. And then now you have – your brothers or sisters that gotta drag your ass out. Exactly. And you and you gotta serve your the citizens. Are, are you really helping them? Yes. If you're not helping yourself. This is exactly the conversation that I've had with um, Company Four, and and not so much it's not so much anymore, but um, because I've been working with them for so long. But not only is your your time and effort and energy and um, you know blood, sweat, and tears invested into your own fitness and insurance policy insurance policy for yourself to get home and to get out of the fire or get out of the situation or whatever it's for uh your the man or woman next to you um god forbid to the person in the house so that you can so that you can help that person get out and get yourself out um it's it is a massive insurance policy for a couple hours a week Agreed. And I know there's guys, they'll preach and they'll be like, oh, I spend three hours at the gym. I spend five hours at the gym. You have people that also spend an hour a day or mm-hmm. hour a couple of days and they are prog- they have a lot of progress. Mm-hmm. And then you got these guys that do six, seven hours and they're just bulky. And right. it's like, can you actually use those muscles yeah. to perform real life situations or is that just show yeah you know nick the, and and this is i hope that no one um misunderstands this and this is not this is not an accusation of of anyone but um and i've i've had similar conversations with other people but what i don't necessarily understand is the aversion to any kind of self-care or self or, or fitness at all and on the part of um, the fire service or or law enforcement. There are standards that you need to meet in order to get in. Uh, and I think um, wasn't uh, – who was – you were just talking about this with somebody on the po- – um, Drew. I think you guys were just talking about the, the fitness standards with Drew. Yeah, the uh, right? OSHA's starting to push more regulations. Mm-hmm. Both certifications and fitness and physical, uh, uh, what's it called, physicals. Okay. So. Yeah, and I'm aware that there is some recoil and and aversion to. Well, now we're going to um, hold you all to standards once you're in and retest you. I, I. I can and I can't understand why people will recoil from that. Mm-hmm. Um. The pursuit always should just be, in my opinion, now I'm not in the fire service and I'm not in law enforcement, so I can only understand it to a point. I can understand it on a human level, like 
now is another standard I have to meet. Okay, yes. I mean, for law enforcement, you have to requalify when you shoot, right? We have standards. I I have to do continuing education for uh, to maintain my my personal training certification. Um, you guys all have drill nights and and you have to practice and stay up on things. Um, on a human level, I can understand why someone would say. Oh man, now I have to now I have to get more fit and now I have to eat better and now I got to now I got to work hard in the gym. I can understand that, but then you also have a responsibility. And nobody's saying um you know, when you're 60, these guys that are 60 have to maintain the same fitness level as when they started when they yeah. were 17, 18, 19, 20, whatever. But um as I've said to you guys in the shop, right? Progress not perfection. It should be, I would think, and again, maybe I don't have a complete understanding for, uh, of it because I'm not in the same boat as all of you guys, but from someone on the outside in and as someone who has helped one and, and starting to help a second fire department, Mawa and now Oakland, um, for an hour a week, if you can get just a little better and, and maybe down the road um, be able to, you know, maybe your tank lasts a little longer. Right? Maybe your maybe your Scott Pack lasts a little longer. Even fifteen seconds, twenty seconds. That's that could be life and death. I, God forbid. I gotta agree because I what really changed my mind is I was into fitness and uh I was like, Yeah, I don't really wanna go to the gym. Not not my scene and one day we were at a fire and I'm like exhausted and mm -hmm. I'm like I gotta do something. Mm -hmm. This is this shouldn't. I should not be exhausted that fast. And um, after that, we we would have other jobs, and it's like, wow, I still got more momentum. Mm -hmm, more it's like I can't, like I'm not exhausted as fast, or I'm able to That's do amazing. more. And it's like, That's amazing. It, and I feel better also mentally, physically, other than being sore all the mm -hmm. time, and just oh. yeah. So, most of the time, but it's a good feeling. And l l I, that's that's a testament to you, right? You had the humility to say, oh, maybe I should do something about this. Like, and it's within my power to do something. N your goal, your, you didn't say, oh, I got to look like, like Arnold or, or any of these, you know, any of the yeah. other, the, the fitness, the bodybuilders, whatever. That, that's the, the pursuit is to, is to be safer and to live better. Um, Better than you could last week. Better than you could two months ago. Right. Hmm. It, it, progress. Progress, not perfection. I say this to all the guys and all my clients. Um, but that's your own humility and your character to look at yourself and say, mm, maybe this isn't the best. Maybe I, maybe, maybe I should just start moving in a different direction. And that's it. And that's why you are now two years later. And, and I hope everybody that's listening today is kind of maybe on the edge of wanting to go. Go. Go for a walk. I mean, I've had someone asking about an app, mm -hmm. and they want to pay for it. And I'm like, why don't you look into your lifestyle and see what do you want to do? Why don't you walk a little more? Mm -hmm. And I go, how how much soda did you have a day? She, they're like, uh, I'll two two a day. I'm like, why don't you cut have it down? One, w one, right? One a day or one every other day. Just progress. And then you could still have it. Don't do. it. Uh, cold turkey because you, what's going to happen is you're going to desire it more. Oh, you've, you've, and then yeah, 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 yeah. I've yeah, done that. Right. I, I've done that multiple times because I was in that predicament of I drank Mountain Dew every day, oh, wow. Pepsi every day, just because like even like after a fire, mm -hmm. it's something that just calms my nerves, and it was it was something I just did. And you all caught that, right? Mountain Dew calmed Nick down. <laughs> it did. <laughs> that's it, where it, that's the standard, it right? <laughs> calmed me down. And now I would have a Mountain Dew maybe once every other weekend or sort of once a week. I mean, because you're human and you enjoy yeah. it, and that's okay. And here and there, I'll slip up. I'll have a, a few. I mean, I'm going camping for two weeks this week, and so I'm going off the rails because it's vacation. Because of vacation, and it gives you the fuel to be able to come back and say, "All right, I'm good. Yep. I'm good for a while. I'm gonna get. I can get back on the horse." Yep. Yep. Yeah. You know, I. I um. I wish that people understood 
that fitness and the gym doesn't have to be miserable. No. If you don't like running, don't run. Don't run. run. If you like walking, go walk. Right. I've done, and I've explained it, this to you when I run with my uh, split, uh, what's it called? Shin splits. Mm-hmm. I don't like running, but I did it because I wanted to. So I decided to stop walking mm-hmm. instead of running. Because wh- why am I going to put myself through it to be miserable and, and do something that I do like? I bought a jump rope and I do that. That's... I like doing that more than running, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. I just modify my workouts like that. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I look. You, um, we all have to do things. We don't. You, if if anybody thinks that you guys <laughs> always like going to drill night, <laughs> yeah, no, there's that's some, a sacrifice. Th- there's some nights I don't want to, but of then at the end of the day, and it gets you better. S- same thing with fitness. When you don't want to go to the gym, there's. Multiple times I'm at the gym parking lot, sitting there for 10 minutes, not wanting to go. (laughs) And it's like, I don't want to do this. But by the time I'm done, I'm like, I'm glad I did this. Mm -hmm. Same thing with drill. I'm Mm -hmm. glad I did this because you you feel refreshed and you feel like you accomplished something Mm -hmm. at least that day. Mm -hmm. Let's say you don't do, do anything that day and you do that, then you feel accomplished. Yes. Yes. Always. Always. So... Um, yeah, I, it's something that I, again, I know that the, uh, maybe some of the older guys recoil at and, and, uh, are are against, right? These, these standards, Mm -hmm. but it, um, it can be another, um, activity that congeals the department too, Mm -hmm. right? And not everybody's at the same fitness level and that's okay. And you don't have to be. Right. No, no. And we're all in different life situations. And just think when you'll be 70 and you got grandkids, Mm -hmm. you won't be ill or, I mean, I'm not saying you're not going to get ill, but. That's a very, that's a very interesting point, Nick. So, so I do have two gentlemen who are both in their mid to late Mm seventies. And, um, now of course we all have different health situations and life situations, but the contrast is very interesting. I have one gentleman who, um, just stayed fit his entire life, and again, never looked like Arnold, but was was active. was a was a downhill skier and giant uh, slalom and giant slalom, and was involved in um, a a um, sea do uh, racing team, and you know was always working with his hands and outside, and just really never stopped. And I have another gentleman who um, he, there are some other health struggles, but uh, he was in a line of work where he um where he's been sitting he's been sitting for for his for his profession for 50 years and again i'll preface this by saying there oh there is only so much that is within our control mm-hmm. um certain things are we have no control over right who gets cancer who gets sick who's got xyz um but or i should say however Generally speaking, and these two gentlemen are, are an example of it, there is a theme, uh, a consistent theme that the people who just don't stop moving are healthier longer. They're cognitively more sharper. They're happier longer. Um, these guys are the same age. One of them can't sit and stand on his own, uses a walker. Um, has fallen, I don't know how many dozens of times in the last year. Um, this the other gentleman who I think is actually uh, a few years older, is closer to eighty. Wow. He had he had a hip replacement. He I have him squatting and deadlifting. Now, not four hundred pounds, but okay, the, an empty barbell. Right, he's picking kettlebells up off the floor, and yes, okay, he's in his mid to late seventies, and he's moving as some. He's not moving as well as you or I would, or somebody who's eighteen. Of course not. We age. We all age, but that contrast is so sharp. Um, he's he's able to, you know, his his family doesn't worry about him as much. Um, 
his uh, his living situation is different um, because he has invested by by design or uh, by motivation or not all of this time into his movement and fitness. He's invested all of this time, money, and effort forever. Um, that now he's drawing on all of those deposits he's made and all through his entire life uh, in his own independence. Um, now, by no fault of his own, this other gentleman, and this was his living, and you know he was dealt certain health, certain hands in his health that he had no control over. Okay, but um, you know now we're working on. All right, let's just get you to stand up out of the chair by yourself, and that's fine. And I've been working with him for I think almost two and a half years. It's two years. He can almost do it. Like we we almost got him there. That's awesome. We almost got you know we got him standing straighter. Yeah. We got him you know picking things up off the floor, um, being confident without the walker. So you know progress, not perfection. We spend time outside. You know he was he was inside for weeks at a time. Uh, you and I probably go nuts if we spend three hours inside without going yeah. outside, right? So the effect on your body that way, and and we can go down the rabbit hole, right? But yeah, that, that's as we all age. You, this is just part of your life, and the again, I'll say it till I die: progress, not perfection. Yeah, and you gotta remind people that because mm-hmm. I gotta remind myself. You gotta remind yourself again to you because you you always in your mind saying, hey, I got to do better, I got to do better, right. better. But you got to also remember that you don't have to be perfect all the time. It's not going to happen. That's right. It doesn't happen. And we are all aging. And I can't spend three hours in the gym like I used to, yeah. training and, and training to compete. And I have, I have um, my bride and my children and a business to run, right? So all things being equal, I need to keep it to an appropriate amount of dedication and devotion for this time in my life. I, I cannot work out for three hours a day, five days a week like I used to. It wouldn't be appropriate um, because there are other priorities and everything needs to be in its correct spot. Yep. Right? So. But you should. Anyway. You should still make time for working out. Yes. At least. Yes. At least a 15-minute walk. I mean, it does something. something. It does the, something. The whole I don't have time thing. Yeah. You might not have an hour, to your point. You might not have 45 minutes. You might not have a half hour. You might have not have 20 or 15 you got four. I guarantee you we all have hours because we have 24 hours in the day. And I know a lot of people are spending on their phones and Netflix. Mm-hmm. It's all how you put prioritize on what you want to do. Do a Tabata. Eight rounds, 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off. And try to get better every week. Yep. Yeah. Now, how did you get into training uh, Larry and Dodd? So, Larry, I actually met when I was um, – training myself and, and working at the CrossFit gym, um, locally. Um, so I've known Larry, I don't even know how many years I've known 25 Larry. years, I no. think he said. I knew him through, through friends and through, through, uh, my sister. I think I really started to get to know him about 15 years ago, Okay, which is nuts that that's 15 years ago now. <laughs> um, but yeah, and so you know we you know different we have friends in common, and you realize the circles you know it's just a very small world, right? We know that. So um, I knew him. I got to know him very well at the CrossFit gym, um, and then uh, I actually started to try to take on more fire departments, and so I was training Oakland fire department and i knew that um uh larry and ryan were were nearby and local and and connected with kind of, with franklin lakes and Oakland fire of course right so um originally i was i was training those guys oakland i was training on friday night and uh ryan i was training maybe once a week once, maybe once or twice a week. I forget at the time. Um, Friday nights got to be tough. Oakland, the Oakland guys, the, the fr- because right for all of us, Friday, Friday evening, it's the weekend. Tough evening. Yeah, of course. So that's understandable. Um, and then, uh, you know, I I had some work done on on one of the trucks here, as as you guys all know, um, just to make it easier for me to back in and out of driveways, and because 
New Jersey drivers are so wonderful and aware of their surroundings. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> it doesn't matter how many lights you put on your truck, they still won't. Exactly, yes, which I've come to find out. Um, Though, we would like to add more to your truck. I would like to add more to my truck too, Nick, so maybe we could set that up. Um, no, and so um, then, you know, in getting to know Ryan, actually, so I, uh, Ryan's cousin, Dan, was a training partner of mine for a few years. And so, again, small world. You know, everybody kind of knows everybody in the same circle. And so um, I was looking for work to be done here, and then the relationship grew a little bit. There's that word again, right, the relationship. And um, then uh, I was training each of them, Ryan and Larry, once or twice a week. And then Ryan um, asked me about the possibility of coming to the, sh- coming to the shop to train everybody. It was really, it was really Ryan's idea. Um, and then, so that just snowballed right now. I'm training each of them, each of them twice a week. I come to the shop once a week and, uh, I like to, I believe that it's been beneficial for everybody. Um, you know, Larry, Larry's doing great. He's, uh, stronger. He's lost a lot of weight. Ryan's doing great. He's been more dedicated lately than he's been, than he's been, um, uh, in a long time, right? He's, he's down, he's stronger, he's faster, as you guys, as all of you guys, right? Mm-hmm. I, I explained this to you um, yesterday or last week. I forget when we had the conversation. When we did Sally, the last time we did Sally, um, and just explaining to you how the pro- how you have all progressed. Um, right? I keep track of not necessarily in the group. You guys, you guys keep track of your weights and times yeah. and everything. But for for all of my one on one clients like Larry and um, Ryan, I keep track of all the numbers. So there's workouts that we repeat. There's there's movements that we repeat. Obviously, you know, for anybody in the fitness industry, right? That that progressive overload and um, the uh, super compensation that your body goes through in order to to get stronger and faster. If you're not recording those numbers, or measuring your, um, or keeping a log of your of your workouts on some level, you you don't know how to force that adaptation. And so I know that they both feel stronger. I know that they both feel faster and, and more capable just in life in general. Their motors are better. Uh, of course, there's going to be little little tweaks and twinges and, and everything along the way. That's Unfortunately, that's part of it. Yeah, It just is part of it. Um, we're not 18 and 20 and 25 anymore. You're going to get a little pull here. You're going to get a little tweak there. But, um, you know, most of the guys understand that, you know. We're not sitting on the couch doing nothing. There's going to be a little bit of a risk. Um, of course, we we do our best to watch form and technique, and uh, you were always kind of walking the line of um, right pushing right to that that limit to to force the adaptation without overdoing it. So, um, yeah, I, I I I think it's been great. They you know all of you guys work hard. Larry and Ryan work hard. Um, Ryan is my Ryan's my earliest client. I see Ryan at five thirty in the morning. Wow! <laughs> so I don't think anybody's going to outdo him there. Um, no, so, I don't uh, think some people don't want to wake up that early. That is really early, and I tell Ryan all the time how much I respect that. I will it, get up. That's respectful. It's that is really hard. You you want to you don't want to get up in that when it's five o'clock in the morning because no. it's dark and you're just tired, and then it's nice to see some people able to get up and they'll walk out and then yep. they'll be working 10, 12, 16 yes. hours after yes. that and then they'll do it again. Yep. And It's amazing. It's amazing because, you know, I confirm with him, you know, the night before, Monday night and Wednesday night mm-hmm. uh, to make sure we're in. Um, and it shows dedication too. It does. It does. That's that consistency. Um, look, I think Ryan would say that if he doesn't do it then – it's not going to happen. Yeah. And so, well, like, what's the alternative? I do think that what's helpful is, for any of us, right, it's helpful to have an appointment. It's helpful to have a commitment to, to someone else, your accountability partner, right, you, um, a training partner, a gym partner. In, in our case and for uh, my relationship with Ryan, like, I'm bringing everything. I'm, I'm showing up. I'm coming. Um, that's – that it. It's hard to just roll over in bed and say, eh, I'm just not going to go today. Well, 
no, John's outside. <laughs> right? yeah. Like he it, will bang on your door. Right. And say, Let's well, go. there's a, there's a personal there's a personal commitment there. Yes, it's a commitment to yourself, and uh, you have a responsibility to yourself. But Ryan has made a personal commitment to me to 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 show up, right? And you know, it's bigger than the than the business side of it. You know, I have a 24 hour cancellation policy. That if you cancel within 24 hours after the first one, I have to charge the session. Yeah. So there's that side of it, and you know, there's also the side of look if somebody's legitimately sick or there's a legitimate family issue. Of course, I would never charge a session. I'm not heartless. I, at least I like to think I'm not heartless. Um, but the, well, we're doing those workouts. I don't the, know sometimes. I don't feel like doing this tomorrow, or I don't feel like it. Like, I, and this is not pointed at Ryan. We're, we're yeah. talking about Ryan, but if this is for anybody, I don't feel like doing this tomorrow. Well, why not? I, I have to charge. Okay, yeah, yeah. Right, well, why, not? why not? But but you know the business side. Well, then I can't just let. Yeah. I can't let it go. You got to feed I have a business family. to run, right? I got to feed my family. But um, I think that the personal responsibility and the personal commitment to someone is the motivation for um, all of my clients and all of my guys, more so than the 24-hour cancellation and and you lose the session and you you get charged the session or whatever. I I think it's less – I like to think it's less that and more that, well, I've made a commitment to you. I'm going to be there and I'm going to show up. And you make the commitment to show up. Right. So it's it's not like, oh, he's not going to show up today. It's, right. Oh, we won't do it. Right. And that's why Skip it works. It. Yep. That's why it works. Um, and I, I take pride in that. And um, so, uh, and I and I like being able to provide that for people. So um, I don't know, I don't know how we got, even got on that, but <laughs> it's the, it's, it's that it's just part of your life. It's just part of your life. You gotta fold it into. Oh, life. I said Ryan is my yes. earliest client. <laughs> Five thirty. So yeah, it's amazing. Can it we, really uh, is amazing. And I and I can keep... we book for four o'clock? Would you do that? I'll do it. How early will you go? As early as somebody wants to meet. Really, Mark, Mark, I stand by that. As early as somebody wants to meet, I will do. Um, That's a commitment. Yeah, I've never canceled for weather. Ever. Even in the snow. Even in the snow. I've had people to tell me not to come, which is commendable of but them. I will. I will come. I will show up. I don't care <laughs> because your fitness is important. Yeah, your fitness is important. Um, the the number of times where the roads are absolutely a hundred percent impassable is zero. Now, what did you just basically? Disconnect your trailer and just show up on your truck. If it's that bad, I would do that. But it's never been it's never yeah. been bad enough. It hasn't. That's good. That's right? good to know. So. It's a commitment. Brendan's like, oh no, <laughs> he's gonna show up. I live around the corner yeah. from Brendan. And he's gonna show up. He's gonna show up at my house. <laughs> yeah, you. you no, you I mean, there Wednesday night. You're showing up. To look, his house. if Make you sure leave, he a book out. and of course, look, I'm human, right? But I, I really do try to leave early enough where look if i gotta if i gotta go slow and get there yeah and granted it if it's really stupid to go then obviously i won't like i I have to stay alive yeah but um no i mean i get up and i i look outside and i and i plan early enough to to get wherever you need to get and like how many mornings in the winter is it is it really that bad not that much twice yeah a year you right? just done snowing by then, and right. it's all clear. Yeah, I that mean, means we gotta go back to work. <clears throat> right, that's right. Usually we're playing. We're <laughs> right. like, come on, it'd be bad, and nope, it stops snowing. Go now the work. other side of it is that most of my clients are within 15 minutes, really within 10. Yeah. So I'm not really going that far, um, and the people that I have who are farther, like uh, Whippany and Florham Park, those are generally later in the day. So by that point, the road's clear, right? So. Um, yeah, so I, I I I am human. I you know my I have a responsibility to my to my wife and my children. Um, you know you, nobody I can't be stupid, but also there's a there's a value in I think kind of pushing that and providing a service that that I agreed to and that I made a commitment to to provide. And how do you how do you understand and like we're all different. Like every every one of us mm-hmm. are different. How do you go from pro- 
programming a training session for even individually or a group session? I think so. So what I generally do is I start with, okay, what do I want the movements to be? Like yesterday we did the, the rowing and the barbell thrusters. Um, so you guys all know, I, uh, so that there's three bars that I generally keep in the trailer, right? The, the training bar, the junior training bar is 25 pounds, 25 pounds. The women's bar is 35 and the men's bar, the standard men's bar is 45 pounds. And so if you, if you remember yesterday, I separated you into three groups. Now the rowers are all the same, yeah. um, but the, I separated you into, um, more or less who is capable of doing what weight. So. I have the I have the the ideal um, or the goal workout the ideal workout that I would like you to all be able to do, and then I can dial down the the weight like I did yesterday. Um, we can dial down the movement like an example would be push ups. Like if you can't do push ups yet, you you scale it to your knees, and I'll bring the mat, and you you just you cross your ankles, put your knees on the mat, and you do push ups that way. Um, if that's too much, then we elevate it, right? So you, every movement pretty much has a similar, easier movement or at least something that works the same kind of comp- – a similar compound movement or something that works um, muscles that are – or at least along the same lines. And so um, I guess, Nick, I've just been doing it long enough – that I have in my head a large enough bank of movements, like for lack of a better term, a a large enough log of movements that I can swap something out really fairly quickly. Like if someone has a little tweak or an injury or um, not capable of something or mobility issue, whatever, um, we can work with that. I can work with that. So the short answer would be it just comes from experience Mm -hmm. uh, and working with all different people of all different abilities um i think uh the the goal is always a is the stimulus less than the because it's all the movements are all going to be um difficult relatively speaking relative to that person um meaning if i asked you know you how that 45 pound bar felt yesterday, you would maybe say, because it was light and we were doing high reps, maybe you would say uh, you were using for, a 45 pound bar. Maybe you would say it was a, an RPE of three, you know, with the number of reps you were yeah, doing. Yeah, I can't. It's, I can't wrap my head around that. The, the rate that, of perceived exertion. Yeah. <laughs> that, like, it was heavy, it was light. It was heavy, that, it was light. That's it. <laughs> so now, if I asked someone who I had on the 25 pound bar, um, what I try to pursue is that their RPE for that weight for them and their ability with and their strength level at where they're at right now today, I try to get it to be a th- also a three. Another way to another way to look at this is that you're after the stimulus, you're after a difficulty level, you're after a rep range, you're after um, you're after a certain sensation, you're after you're pursuing a certain number of reps before you're, you fatigue. And so it, it, the weight is almost inconsequential. Um, if we're looking for a rep range, well, then X weight is you're only going to be able to do X number of reps at a given weight. And so we want uh, – what I try to do is, is give a weight or a movement that gets – all of you in a group to that uh, rep range. If you remember when we first started, I said, okay, guys, there's a learning curve here. There's a learning curve from you to my direction in learning how I coach, learning some of the terms, learning um, how a session goes, understanding, um, just understanding like how I work, understanding the the pace of a session and all of those things. There's also a learning curve from me to you, the athlete. Okay, how does how does Nicholas move? How does Bria move? How does 
uh, Brennan move. What are what are at least Lee's strengths and weaknesses? Although I don't think Lee has any weaknesses. No, I don't think so. He may. <laughs> he's old. I'm not gonna say he's old, old, but uh, I mean, careful. <laughs> he he has he's up there in age, and when you look at the young guys that are mm-hmm. there, and he's just cranking them out, yep. and Ooh. you're like, it's amazing. Are you so Lee on is something? the only. <laughs> I have never seen anyone, and I've said this to Lee. I hope, I think I've said it to Lee. I hope I've said it to Lee. I'm, I think that I have. Well, now I've definitely said it to Ryan. Well, so I'm saying it. it so I'm saying it again, at the very least. Um, I have never seen anybody do complete, not only complete Sally the first time, but the guy didn't move. No. His hips were level with his shoulders the entire time. He didn't shift his feet. He didn't shift his hands. He wasn't, like, resting one side or the other. He wasn't shaking. He wasn't shaking. It was amazing to watch. I've never seen that from anybody ever. Um, and I've been, you know, in the fitness world for now it's 15 years. Um, it's incre- incredible. And that shows. So, so for you, so just I just want to explain. So anybody who doesn't know what Sally is, the Sally Challenge, right, is, is the song is Flower by Moby. It says it. The words are green Sally up, green Sally down. So it sounds like bring Sally up, bring Sally down, and you do a high plank for green Sally up and low plank um, for bring Sally down. And so you, you go, you try to go the whole song. Very few it people three, make it the first time. It's like three, three and 26. 26, I think, technically on, on Spotify. Is we got to make it longer. We got to make it longer. Or you do one foot or you put a weight on you. Yeah. Somehow. Well, that's another conversation. <laughs> um, so anyway, so yes, that, that's amazing. And so – Point being, like we're all after a stimulus. Um, nobody in the no no veteran lifter, no veteran person in the gym is going to look at somebody doing lightweight who's in the gym consistently working hard and say, "Oh, he's only doing fifteen pound dumbbell presses." Yeah. No, because it doesn't matter the weight; it matters the effort level and the stimulus that you're after. So, he's putting the time in. He's putting the time in. He's consistent. He's here. He's working. Any anybody who's been in this world, uh, in the fitness world for long enough, would tell you that. Nobody cares. Nobody yeah, cares. Every, everybody's like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to look silly when I no. grab the ten pounders. No, no one cares. Nobody cares. We're, we're doing our the, thing, and the people who are in the best shape and the the people who look like the beasts in the gym are going to be your best cheerleaders. The people that you might be intimidated by, and maybe uncomfortable around. Are the people who would be your best friend because they because they what you think they were born that way? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no. So they know exactly where you're at and they know exactly what it takes and and they're the friendliest people. Yeah, and it shows they put the work in. And yes, it, no one's gonna do it for you. Let me tell you something. Even people who are on who are on maybe taking steroids or enhanced or whatever, it doesn't mean you don't have to work. You still gotta work your butt off. Yeah. Hard, a lot, and you have to eat right and all of it. Like it doesn't just you can't just like e- take eat- those things and sit on the couch. Eating it's a lot right of work. is that's the hardest difficult. Part. Yeah, that's the hardest part. So anyway, how would you with eating right, with having kids, how do you regulate that between the kids' food and your food, and just trying to keep it nutritionist? The easy answer is that you're going to eat the way you shop. Instead, so shift our, and, and so it was, a, it was a challenge for me, especially with, not with infants, not with an infant, because they're either, um, they're either breastfeeding or they're on formula or whatever. And we all do what we're capable of doing with that. But toddlers and young children has become definitely more challenging for me. I started to go, I, I started to like lose it a little bit. Yeah. And so I had to really center myself. I'm not perfect. I had to really kind of reel it in and... Now, my children eat the way we eat. Correct. Instead of, now, okay, does that mean there's not, like, like treats and, and whatever yeah. and kid food? Yeah, of course there is. But um, I would say definitely within the last six months, um, right, it's, it's grilled chicken and it's, it's um, veggies, whether they're, you know, frozen or whatever, and it's, and it's um, complex carbs and... Um, you know, we've stopped having sweet cereal for breakfast, even though it's easy. Look, to eat to eat poorly is easy, right? It's it's easier. It's, it's cheaper. Easy and it's, yeah. 
No, it's just good. Took it out of my mouth because it's cheaper. It's a lot cheaper. I could go to Wendy's, yep. get a $6 baggie, yep. and it'll fill me up. But no. a salad's $15. They're children, right? You, I, life is real, right? And so, and so we, do, we all do the best that we can do. You're going to eat the way you shop. And if you shop a certain way and put healthy things in the fridge and in the pantry, then that's what they have to eat. So when, as a dad, right, anybody who's listening who's a dad, you, you hate to see food go to waste. Um, and so either it's leftovers or you or you finished their plate or whatever. If you are doing that and it's grilled chicken and, you know, mashed potatoes, good ma- health and like real mashed potatoes and veggies or grilled veggies or, you know, um, fish or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, you don't feel so bad about eating it because it's like what you're eating anyway. Um, you know, what kid doesn't like chicken nuggets and mac and cheese? Okay, well, let's make less mac and cheese or let's do it, let's make it from scratch real as best as we can with not, without, you know, 14 pounds of butter in it. You know, the, the, the chicken nuggets, um, we found, I think last year, a year and a half, whatever, whatever the time was, we found, um, real chicken breast, like the, that you can see the, the, the meat, the grain of the meat, and it was lightly breaded. So that's what we make for them instead of mush that's molded into whatever yeah that that looks like cornmeal inside like i don't know what animal that came from it's everything but the meat pretty much it's it's like if you looked into how it was made it's disgusting yeah it may taste good but if you really look into it garbage right so um you know if, if uh mandy or i are finishing one of their plates like that's real chicken and you know the you know the mac and cheese all right. Well, it was it's real pasta, and it was and it was um, it was real cheese, and you know, the butter thing. It's not the butter that's bad. We can get into the whole cal- calorie conversation, but you know, we try to really limit the the chemicals and the the ingredient lists are short as best we can. Again, progress, not perfection. So to answer your question, I guess with you know eating with the kids. I would say the flow chart would be you're going to eat the way you shop. Anybody is going to eat the way you shop. Your kids are going to eat what's in the house. If you're buying them, if we need to buy them snacks or there's, there's juice or whatever, you, you really you try to do the best you can. Um, sweet cereals, you know, do they get to pick a, a little bit of a sweet cereal here and there? Of course. Is it every morning? No. Absolutely not. Eggs in the morning. They have eggs. We make eggs, eggs and egg whites. And this morning we did a little bit of chicken sausage. They are so much more even through more of the day, and they don't snack as much. Um, You can see the difference. You can see the difference. There's no, like, we don't do the whole Pop-Tart thing. We don't do, you know, um, you know, like Lucky Charms. That's, I don't know what that is, but it's not food. (laughs) Now, are there Lucky Charms on the top of the fridge at home? Yes. Is that a treat for special times sometimes because they're kids? Yes. Um, do we fill the bowl and then and then and then it's overflowing? <laughs> no, because then what happens? Then who's going to finish it? You will. And that's not good. No. Because then <laughs> and that that's, that's not portion control either. It's... Right. Right. Look, we all got that line, right? You can have as much as you want, but you got to finish your plate. And that's part of parenting. No kid finishes their plate all the time. So, you know, that's that's part of a learning curve for us as parents too, right? Okay, how much is each kid eating and, like, how much do we put on there and, and try to hold that line of, like, learning to finish what you start. All of that, all of those, all of those moving parts. Um, but, yeah, I mean, we go down the rabbit hole, but that, that's what I would say. And do you do a lot of meal prep or is it cooking every night? What – so – I don't really have the time to meal prep in the traditional sense of like what people would say is meal prepping. But if I'm grilling chicken, 
I'm making, you know, six chicken breasts and there's leftovers. If we're making rice or doing or baked potatoes, we'll make enough so that there are leftovers on purpose so that it's a little more time efficient. C- cooking six chicken breasts versus cooking three did make is no different time wise. No. Um, making, you know, four baked potatoes versus making two is no different. It's so more I would say crap. Yeah, you just like when you when I cook normally or Mandy cooks normally, we just make extra and then it's like in the fridge and it's easy, quick go. Or we'll throw it in the freezer so you can have it next week if possible. Yeah, exactly. I mean, what I've I've done and learned is I, I've done BJ's and it's actually something I didn't realize. I bought pork chops and I'm thinking they're they're this thick. Mm-hmm. I, I bought what came in it was seven. I made seventeen out of them. I cut them up, I seasoned them, I cooked them. Mm-hmm. Took me half hour to cook them. Yeah. And then I threw them in the freezer so I could have them for this whole month. If I don't That's have it. it's just easier that way. some lunch, just grab it. I don't, there was a time where I would like fill the Tupperwares and measure everything. Uh, I don't have the time to do that. <laughs> I just don't. Between running the business and the kids, like yeah, you, I could make the time, but I'm choosing other priorities. Like, you know, wrestling with my kids or spending time or reading to my daughter or whatever, right? There's there's other things that I'm choosing right now. So, yeah. And you don't have to be perfect with that as no. of if you keep your portions down, if you're eating right, you don't have to be perfect about it. Right. You don't have a measure. I know someone. I weigh and measure most of the time. I oh, don't do, do it all the time. Yes, I do. Because most of the time I do. My buddy's son does, like, is religiously, mm-hmm. like, he would take chicken out of his pocket and they put it on a skit. He'll take the scale out of his pocket mm. and he'll put the chicken on and measure. Oh, got to cut this up. Nope. Right. You can't. Right. Yeah. He's dialed in. He, he now, is dialed. And he looks good. He, he has a six pack and all. And he did that's this. That's what it takes. And he does this bodybuilder uh, program mm-hmm. uh, in Baltimore wow. where he lives. And he looks great. I mean, I'm sure he does. I'm sure he does. But. I, a lot of people doesn't don't have that dedication to do that. That's not always um, compatible with real life. That level of specificity, right? So it, what also starts to happen is when you weigh and measure for a long time, you kind of have a sense of where you're at during the day or like how much protein, like this, roughly this much chicken is roughly this much protein roughly this much oatmeal oatmeal is this many carbs or whatever. So, or, you know, a banana that's this big is roughly this much. So and same thing with calories. Yeah. I mean, you're going to kind of have an idea of where you're at. Um, I will weigh and measure to give me an idea of like where I need to be during the day. And so it, it does get me where I need to be. And like I've been cutting for the summer. Right, so I want to make sure that my I'm hitting a protein number, but my calories are a little less. So it it helps to keep me on track. Um, but I've been doing it long enough that I I don't need to be like down to the grain of sugar every, anymore. Yeah, you know. Yes, I put sugar in my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of coffee, which camera am I looking at? Oh, the <laughs> poor city is in Franklin Lakes. Uh, if anybody is local, they're they're great. Uh, it's a great family. Jim and Allison and um, Sean are the owners. Uh, anybody should go check them out. As a as a law enforcement family, so um, yep. that, that's a great place to check out. Do they have donuts? They have croissants. My son loves their croissants. I don't know they if that's have, offensive to them, but uh. well, <laughs> 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 they have croissants. They have coffee cake. They have um, yeah, they have some treats in there. It's awesome. Case. Uh, they're, definitely they're, gotta try that out. They though. roast it there. They roast the coffee there. The they coffee do. roasting machine. The the. I guess the oven or whatever they would call it is there, and they roast it there. That's awesome! Be- awesome, awesome because coffee. You don't, I mean, most of the coffee shops around here is Dunkin' and all that, and Dunkin it's all imported. Starbucks. So yep. it's yep. nice to see companies and entrepreneur. Uh, I'm not even going to even say <laughs> it. Uh, roast their own beans and stuff. Yes, but yeah, I mean, you'll go in and you'll see Jim sitting in front of the roaster. It's it's great. I mean, you know, he'll explain it to you. He'll let you watch. I mean, it's yeah, great. It's awesome. great company, great people. For sure. Go check them out. Poor City and Franklin Lakes. Will do. Well, John, thank you for coming on to our podcast. And uh, we do appreciate what you do on Wednesdays. And it's awesome that we're able – the company lets us do this. 
for an hour on the clock. Mm -hmm. So it, uh, that is gr awesome that they invest that uh, invest yeah. in that for you guys. And really. and it shows they care about mm -hmm. how we look, not how we are physically active and try to keep us more motivated to keep walking. Well, I mean, so maybe that's something we could say real quick. I mean, the the benefit of that is you guys are all you're you're working together on something that's not work. The I'm I'm sure that the vibe in the in the shop before and after the workouts is is great. I'm sure that there have been changes since you guys have been working out together. Um, it's nice to know and all of you in the back of your minds that that your that uh, the bosses support you and and yeah. care about you. Who who else does that? Pays you all for your workouts and pays you to work out. Yeah. Nobody nobody's doing that now. Um, and look, does it keep you all healthy? Of course it keeps you healthy. Does it does it keep you stronger and safer? Of course, like we talked about with the fire thing. So it's amazing. And and uh, I mean I'm grateful for the opportunity yeah, and, from, from Ryan and and, uh, and Larry. So And yeah. some people might say it's an hour off work and and technically is. And then you'll have other people that complain, which you know what? Why don't you try? Try it. And there's a couple people who are, I'm like, just come come work out with yeah, us. Just try you, it. Just try it. You yeah. might oh, I don't want to get that big. Which I'm like. Well, that's a whole other company. I mean, that, you gotta try so hard to do that. I've been trying to do that for 15 years. So it's like, it's like, got me just far. try it. Have fun with it. Yes, like, it's just we, fun. We got a couple people that do it, mm -hmm. and then they're like, oh, I don't want it today. And I'm like, let's go. Come yeah. on. Yeah. Let's just do it. It's fun. It's we we get off work. We're able to. Uh, we stem and mm -hmm. able to. Oh, the, and the banter is awesome. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. The banter is yeah. great. Yeah. So, Nick, thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you, 1075, for having me. Um, Ryan and Larry, you guys are, are great, and I appreciate you both very, very much. I appreciate 1075 very much. I am always happy to do a demo for anybody. I'm always happy to, do, uh, to show anybody the trailer. N nobody's really doing what I'm doing uh, in terms of the, the mobile gym and um, – bringing everything to somebody's place of business or somebody's home. Um, always happy to have a phone conversation or nutrition. Um, but uh, if there's a group of people who would like to try a workout, if there's an individual who'd like to try a workout, I'm, I'm happy to have that conversation and set that up on, uh, on me for sure. So thank you very much. Nice having you. Good to be here. <laughs>